What's going on, everybody? Patrick OJ here with the Body Lock with my man Drake Riggs. And we're talking about breaking news in the fact that March 27th, headliner is supposedly going to be Stipe Miocic versus Francis Ngannou 2. Big heavyweight clash, one that we've heard has been in the works for a long time now. Seems that, according to Ariel Hawani, the deal isn't done, but it's getting there and, and pretty much right about done. Usually when he breaks something like this, something comes together. So, Drake, first of all, March 27th, we're finally getting to see this matchup. Uh, are you surprised that this is the matchup and they didn't just have John Jones cut to the front of the queue? No, not surprised, because it seemed like they were pretty adamant to give Francis his shot the whole time, which you can, you know, think is probably kind of funny, just considering it's John Jones. You know, you think John Jones would kind of get a little bit of more special treatment or have that luxury of being able to jump the line, considering it's John Jones, <laughs> you know, the stuff that he's done of all people who's got to wait a little bit. But uh, at the same time, John hasn't seemed that upset about that either. Angano has been dying just to fight as soon as possible, but having earned a title shot and everything, it's like only the one option. He had to wait for DC and Stipe, uh, DC and Stipe to fight again, like all these things. No, not really surprised that this is finally being made. It was just, it felt like it was not going to happen. It was taking so long and everything. Stipe needed to recover after going, you know, five hard rounds against DC and everything. So um yeah no it was, i was just waiting just waiting not surprised whatsoever but uh, happy that it's it's not done yet but that we have a uh a blueprint right this is a good blueprint of timeline and everything yeah and and it's something where as you mentioned francis and ganu has been dying to fight and and get back in there and if you look at his you know just pulling up his last four fights his total time in the octagon is less than three minutes. 242. Yeah, 242. <laughs> there you go. That's insane. <laughs> and so, you know, he definitely deserves the title shot here. I think that nobody can really argue that. And to fi have him finally get that matchup against Stipe is a really big deal because that was his, you know, first big loss on the big stage and it also showed that you know he does have some weaknesses when it comes to cardio and wrestling and to see if he's made improvements on that is going to be massive because if he has it's hard not to say he's going to be champion come march 27th yeah and i mean that's the funny thing though that's the big question is has he really shown he's improved since then? Like, is he the same guy or is he not? Because, yes, right after that fight against uh, Stipe, he fought, Der fought <laughs> Derek Lewis and then, uh, you know, has had two minutes and 42 seconds of, you know, octagon time since then where he's looked great, but doing exactly what we know he's capable of and did on his run up to the title hasn't shown any sign whatsoever because he hasn't needed to that he has improved in these areas that he struggled in against Stipe. So it's like, man, I, I don't know. It's it, We still don't know if this should go... I mean, looking at it on paper, it shouldn't go any different from the first one because we haven't seen that Francis has improved. You know, his grappling defense, his card, all that. I think if, if there's one thing, maybe, that we could take away from all four of these fights on this four-fight winning streak is that... He, to me, which is going to sound funny, has looked maybe a little bit more patient in setting these things up. It, it sounds funny to say that because they've still come very quickly, like, you know, past wins and everything. Um, even though his actual his w past wins leading up to that title shot were longer than <laughs> this current four fight stretch. But either way, I just feel like he's been more calculated in the short amount of time that he spent. And then, of course, the rematch factor. You would have to think, having fought Stipe and gone through that the first time, it's like he's not going to fight exactly the same way that he did in that first fight because it didn't go his way. Of course, he did have some very good success in that first round. That first round was nuts, landed some very hard shots on Stipe where Stipe surprisingly survived, but that just shows how good he is and everything. Um, you know, and the thing also is to think about everybody was saying and i think francis even admitted it too but like that fight and how it went and how bad it was for him changed him to that point where we saw him super hesitant and scared a bit if you want to say in the Derek lewis fight like will that 
come back to haunt him in this kind of fight just because it's Stipe and that's the guy that did it. Yes, we saw after the Lewis, Lewis fight and these four fights that he hasn't been. That was just the one fight thing. He's all good now. But will he be against that guy who did that to him in the first place? Like, there's all these questions about this fight now that are still all around Francis. We know what Stipe is capable of. He should definitely be the favorite this time. He was the underdog in the first fight, which is totally fair, I think. I thought I was all on board the Francis Hype train. I thought he was going to take Stipe out in the first round for sure. Middle of middle of the first round, I was thinking. But now in this one, it's like I, I have trouble not picking Stipe because of, you know, it's it's, as far as we know, the same Francis. And then him reacting to Stipe again. If it's better, a better game plan, will that be enough? Like, because Stipe still is Stipe, and he game plans very smart as well, and having felt, it goes both ways, right? Like, we're talking about Burns and um, Usman, how they both know each other from training so much. These guys, you know, it doesn't just go in terms of Francis having fought Stipe and knowing what to expect and a little bit better and adapt. It goes for Stipe, too, because he did take heavy shots and everything, just had more success overall in the fight. That's why he won. So, I don't know. It's going to be interesting, but I, I I have trouble picking Francis just with what we know about him and still don't know about him. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where when you look at the the fight right after Stipe, as you said, the, the psychological damage that was done to Nganu after that fight, I, I was live for that fight unfortunately uh the rest of the card was great but that fight you know everyone was hyped up to see it and then we were taking our phones out and doing the you know slow song kind of back and forth that <laughs> i don't know how much they showed that on the broadcast but that was all over the arena it was ridiculous and then of course we didn't get a uh post fight interview either right. like that they just you know they're loud booze just get out of here that was it <laughs> but when i you, you mentioned Nganu being more patient. And, and even though that has resulted in him getting quicker wins, I would totally agree with you there. I think what really happened after that Sipe fight for Nganu is he, when he went to fight Lewis next, he overcorrected, you know, to the nth degree, right? When you make a mistake, when you learn to change a behavior, when you realize you've been doing something the wrong way, I know that I've done this many times in the past when I've realized, oh, okay, I'm doing this wrong. We, we as humans tend to overcorrect it to a, a crazy degree where, where we go overboard and then we kind of try and find that balance. I feel like that Lewis fight was the overboard hesitancy, right? He just wouldn't pull the trigger. He was being more patient. And then since then, it, it's gotten where he's much more patient and he's looking for those shots. I won't ever forget in UFC 220 watching that where – those images of Nganu just leaping uppercuts and throwing just crazy stuff, which I think definitely led to his gas tank, you know, having trouble starting in round two and beyond and gave Stipe a massive advantage there. So I, I think Nganu has changed. It's just, as you mentioned, it's, it's hard to say how much, especially when it comes to the wrestling and the other, you know, X factors that are going to, come into play in this match with Stipe though we know that he is a master at adjusting his strategy mid-fight and beyond if you look at how you know the first DC fight went the second DC fight he was losing that fight made the adjustments went to the body got the knockout there the third fight he took those adjustments from the second fight added a couple different things in and dominated that fight I mean it was a whole different level and Yes, there was, you know, DC coming out and saying I shouldn't have fought after surgery, all this stuff. There is all that. But, I mean, Stipe really is very good at adjusting and learning from his mistakes and learning from past foes. So I'm sure he's going to come into the Nganu fight with a different game plan than he did the first time. This should be a great heavyweight matchup, one of the best that we're going to see in the division for a long time. It could also end in a minute and 15 seconds, you know, it, as you mentioned, Stipe weathered some of those giant shots from Nganu the first time around. That doesn't mean he's going to weather them this time. I mean, that man hits like a truck, and if he hits you in the right place, it's just kind of over. i was sorry, a Ford Escort. He hits like a Ford <laughs> Escort, my bad. <laughs> Still a car. Yes. So, 
Yeah. So, I mean, this, this is a, a great matchup. I am very glad they're not having John Jones skip the line. Cause then you've got, you know, a potential Jones wins against Stipe. And then what do you do with Nganu and does Stipe and Nganu have a rematch? Are they down the line? All that. I'm glad they're that we don't have to go and, and, you know, look at that possibility that instead it's going to be the rightful contender versus the champion. So if you're watching this video, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't done it. Hit the notification button to become part of the elite 10% for when these videos drop. And let us know in the comments who you think is going to win, if you think this fight is going to be different than it was last time. To wrap this one up, Drake, let's go ahead and make our predictions. Who do you think wins this fight? You've already kind of given it away a little bit, but are, are you going full on, Stipe? And if so, do you think it's a decision? Um, I think that it would be a decision again for Stipe if he gets the win here. And, you know, something you pointed out about, of course, that first round and Stipe weathering the shots and everything. Since then, he, funny enough, <laughs> since that fight, he's fought the same guy three times in a row. <laughs> he fought DC back to back to back, which is funny. I didn't really realize that that was the Engano fight was right before the trilogy and everything. But um, those were... He got hit a lot in those fights too. So going through those wars with somebody like DC and everything, did that deteriorate his chin a little bit? Just enough to where one of those Engano shots that was landed in the first fight connects again in this fight that it will actually put him down this time. Um, that's something I think that makes me think a little bit more about Francis having a better chance than what I was pretty much alluding to earlier. But Essentially, I think that, as you mentioned, Stipe clearly, you know, just if we're going to look at the trilogy alone, adapted beautifully in the rematch as compared to the first fight. Like, uh, that's about as good as you can, you know, you can adapt to an opponent over the course of many, many rounds, right? Um, so just with that in mind, and the unknowns about France, it's like, I'm picking Stipe in by decision again this time, I think... It probably, it'll probably be, I'm going to lean that it'll be slightly more competitive because I will trust that Francis will be less, you know, wild and spend his gas tank early on in the first round like he did the first time. But uh, I still don't think it'll be enough, no matter what, how many improvements that he's made that we haven't seen yet. I think Stipe is just too good for him. Yeah, in terms of adjustments, again, the only other trilogy I can think of off the top of my head where somebody may have adjusted better or definitely as as much if not better was Cruz and Faber right like <laughs> and, and of course that also is you've got a huge time frame there that changes a lot but you know again Stipe is a strategist his team is very good at helping him make adjustments to come back and beat people in rematches just by by a lot I mean you look at JDS you look at DC it's you know it, it's a thing he, they are known for so I am with you that I think Stipe gets it done I, I think that he'll make the necessary adjustments to dodge those big blows and even though it will give Nganu a little bit more of a gas tank that he's more patient if he can't stuff the takedown which he couldn't at all before and there's no you know there, there's no inkling here that he's been just practicing wrestling and just working on that where he's at a point now where he can stop that. Uh, I Then I think it's going to be just a matter of Stipe finding his ways to get the takedown and just getting Francis to the ground. And I actually think it's going to be Stipe by finish because I think this mm -hmm. time he's going to find a way to get Francis down on the ground, land some big shots and just kind of, you know, either via TKO where a guy who is gassed and can't do anything or just, you know, big shots that I, I I don't dare say he puts Francis away because that might be a little too bold, but it could happen. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Stipe hits hard. He's, he, and his, again, his precision with his shots is there. I, that's that's a big thing. So I'm going to go ahead and give it to Stipe as well, but I'm going to go by finish. Again, let us know in the comments who you think is going to win this fight. And let's just pray to God it's not anything like Nganu versus Lewis. <laughs>